We're going to start with an introduction to the basic object for NumPy, which is the ND array, which stands for n-dimensional array. To create an n-dimensional array, first thing you do is import NumPy. Now I'm working inside the interactive Python console inside of Blender. So if you want to change to that, you have your 3D window, you just go to this little corner down here. At the top is your interactive Python console. You can zoom in and out by holding control and using the middle mouse wheel. I'm going to make the text large so hopefully you can see it for the video. You can auto-complete by holding control and hitting spacebar. And you can do a few other things. You can highlight text with the cursor and copy it and some other things. Um, but you can find tutorials on that. So to get started, we're going to, going to import NumPy. And we usually import NumPy as NP because in all the documentation, that's what people generally do is they import it as NP. It's also easier to type. And then we have NP dot whatever. Control spacebar shows us a whole lot of cool functions that we can do with NumPy. We're going to start by building a basic array of integers. So we're going to call it x. x equals NP dot array. And now you're going to do this like it was a list, a regular Python list, and put in whatever numbers you want to put in there. And now we have an array object. Now this array object, because we just used regular numbers, NumPy is going to assume that it's an integer array. We didn't use any decimals. So if we did y equals array, and we did 1.2 something like that. Now y is actually a float. So if we do x dot d type, we get int 32. If we do y dot d type, we get float 64. So it automatically interprets any decimals that you put in as a 64-bit float array. And if you don't use any decibel, decimals, it will interpret it as a 32-bit integer array. You can also manually indicate the data type. So if I did a equals np.array, and one, two, three. Normally, it would interpret this as an integer array, but we're going to add another argument to our uh, np.array function. And we're going to say d type equals np dot float um, eight. Sure. Um, NumPy has an attribute float eight. What about float thirty two? Okay. Yeah, I guess not eight. Uh, it has float sixteen. Let me see if it has float sixteen. So we have float 16, so A is currently a float 16 array, and it even says so right there, so that's cool. Now, if you've worked with Python and you've worked with lists, well, if you have worked with Python, you've probably worked with lists, then you know if you just create a regular list, um, my reg list equals um, one, two, three. My break list. One, two, three. And if you try to do math on this, um, plus one, you just get an error. If you do my reg list plus another list, like one, one, seventy eight, um, you end up appending the second list to the first list. So it, it combines the lists. It doesn't do any math. It just joins the, the two lists. It's the same thing as if you did mylist.extend, and then you put another list in there. However, on a NumPy array, let's say you take x 
which is one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, and you do plus uh, five. Is that a five? It looks more like a three. Let's let's pretend like it's a five. You end up with the one turns into four because uh, one plus three. Pretend it's a five. Is four. Two plus three is five, and so on. So it's actually doing math. Now it hasn't changed the array um, unless you do an in-place operation like x, you know, plus equals three. Now it changes the array because it's actually overwriting the uh, array that you've allocated already. Um, In-place operations are generally faster. You generally generally want to use them if you can. That's kind of a sidebar. So that's a, a basic introduction to um, your integer and your float data types. And then if you do x, you know, times two, then you end up with eight, five, ten. So we we added three, so it's four, five, six, and then we multiplied it by two, so it's eight, ten, twelve, and so on. Now, if you wanted to take, let's let's start over with a new x. X equals um, mp dot array, and we're going to do um, two with the proper syntax. Okay, I'll just do three twos. Okay, there's our sorry, there's our x array of twos. And now we're going to take a y array, and we're going to do y equals b dot array, and it's going to be one, two, three. And then we do so. Here's x. It's all twos. Here's y. It's one, two, three. We do x times y. And we get two, four, six, because we've taken two, multiplied it by one to get two. We've taken two, multiplied it by two to get four. We've taken two, multiplied it by three to get six. So we're actually multiplying each value by each value in the second array. So when you have arrays that are similar shapes, you can do that kind of multiplication. You can also do something called broadcasting, which is to take arrays that are actually different sizes and multiply them or add them or do other operations on them. Um, assuming you mean to use, well, to take advantage of um, shapes that are divisible by other shapes. So first we need to talk about shapes. Um, if we take our x array and we do x dot shape, we'll see that it has a shape that is a tuple and it's three comma nothing. Um, if we did a, an array and we do, let's let's do use another function instead of numpy, which is the arrange function. So we're going to say x equals np dot arrange, and it's spelled with one r, which threw me off for some reason. I don't I don't know. Is arrange actually spelled with one r? I don't think it is. Anyway, we're going to arrange nine. Okay, now we have zero through eight with uh, nine values. Now, the shape of this array is 9, um, but we can change the shape. There's a function inside of NumPy called reshape. So you can do um, x.reshape, and then I think you do like 3, 3. Um, but I recommend not using reshape. I recommend that you just tell it what the shape is, because the, the NumPy array is an object that has attributes. One of its attributes is its shape, and you can simply overwrite the shape. So x is currently shaped, oh, OK, we didn't actually change the shape of x. We just output what the shape of x would be. So x's attribute is, uh, of shape is still 9. But if we do x dot shape, um, not run the function on it, but actually just say equals and then we use a tuple, we can do 3, 3. And we've actually just changed the shape of x. So x's shape is now 3, 3. Now, if you take an array that has a shape that is divisible by um, 3, like 
3, for example. So let's make a shape, uh, make an array of shape 3. My equals, uh, sorry, empty dot array uh, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and we do x, which is a 3 by 3 array, and y, which is a 1 by 3 array. We can actually multiply these two arrays by each other. So if we do y times x, we get um, 4, 5, 6 multiplied by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8. So 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 6 is 24, and so on and so forth. 8 times, uh, eight times 6 is 48, 5 times 6 is 30, 2 times 6 is 12. And it's, it's basically taking this 3D vector and, well, 3D array, and it's multiplied it by each row in this 3x3 three three array. Now, as, as long as your shapes are com compatible, you can do this kind of broadcasting, which ends up being really, really useful when you start getting into more complicated stuff. Like, um, say you wanted to do a closest point on edge formula, and you have one edge segment, which consists of two 3D vectors, and you have about a million points out in space, which consists of a million 3D vectors and you want to put all of those 3D vectors onto that edge. Well, you would get a scalar, which would be a single value for each of your million 3D vectors um, for how far you have to go along your, your edge segment in order to place those 3D vectors. So you can get this basically a one by one million array of scalars and multiply it row by row by a uh, three by well just basically uh, one by three vector array and I'll show you that later but broadcasting ends up being extremely important when you do any kind of uh, work with geometry which is what I'm going to be doing so there's another thing that you can do with a basic array that's really really important so we're going to say x equals empty dot arrange um, 20 and here's x and we're going to say we want a certain subset of the values. Like I want to take, um, I want to index like 5. Well, x5 is 5. x7 um, seven is 7, and so on. x um, everything is everything. And if you do something like x um, all for 5, you get everything up to 5. If you do x 5 through everything you get from 5 all the way through to the end um, which is typical slicing operations. You can also do um, what they call fancy indexing in NumPy and if you look up fancy indexing in the documentation you'll see there's all kinds of different things you can do with it but for the basics of fancy indexing we're going to make an index array. So we're going to say y equals um, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going to say x, and I want to get values 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we do that, we're actually, and this is hard to see, so let me do this a little different. I'm going to say x plus equals 3. Yeah, there's a 3. Um, it looks like a 4, but it's really a 3. So now x equals 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever. Now if we do x, and we know what y is. y is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we index x with y, we now get 5, 5, 6, 7, 8. Because we've taken index 1, and we've done it twice. We've taken index 2, and so on and so forth. And you can combine this in any way you want. If you wanted to, you could even tile the array. So x equals mp dot array. Um, let's say 23, 23, 23, 23. Well, yeah. And don't forget your square brackets. And now we're going to do x. Um, 
times equals um, empty dot arrange, and I have five values there, so I'm going to do five. And now x is 0, 23, 46, 69, 92, because I just multiplied it by 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which is what np.arrange generates. But regardless, we now have x 0, 23, 46, 69, 92. And um, I could take that x and I could index it with um, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 23, 22, 92. So we've, we've just used this indexing array to generate a new array. Um, for the purpose of speed and efficiency later on, keep in mind that whenever you do a uh, fancy indexing array, you actually have to allocate new memory and you're creating a brand new array. So it's not the fastest way to work, but it ends up being really important for a lot of things. And it's still fairly minimal as far as um, I hit on the speed, especially compared to most of the things you could do with Python. All right, so I'm going to talk about another kind of indexing array, which is the Boolean array. Um, we still have our x, which is nice. And we can create a Boolean array in a lot of different ways. The most straightforward way is to say um, boo, you can name it whatever you want, obviously, equals np.array. Um, and let's go with 0, 1, 0, 0. And we're going to say um, the data type equals np dot bool. Now, boo is uh, what I put in, 0, 1, 0, 0, which uh, amounts to false, true, false, false. 0 is false, 1 is true. I suppose there's more I could say about um, the transition between binary and true, false, but I don't really care because NumPy doesn't care. Um, it interprets zeros as false and uh, other values is true. I think it, it actually interprets, like if we did, let's see, put a 7 in there. Um, 7 ends up being true because it's not 0. Um, you can get into weird situations where that matters, but uh, I don't know that it's that important. So if we have an array that we want to index with this bool array, um, first of all, the bool array has to be the same shape. So if we did, um, let's do a equals np dot range um, five, and then so now we have an array, and a dot shape is five. Now remember our bool array, um, bool dot shape is four. So if we tried to do a, and then we said boo, it's going to get an error because the dimensions don't correspond. But if we did, um, let's see, let's say another bool array. And I'm going to show you another way to create it while I'm at it. So boo equals mp dot zeros, um, and we're going to say five. And we're going to say, well, first of all, np.zeros creates an array of five zeros. Um, but if we do dtype equals equals np, sorry, dot bool, now we have five falses. Um, we can also do bool equals np, sorry np.1s, and we're going to do 5, and we're going to say dtype equals np.bool, now boo equals all true, because zeros are false and ones are true. So boo is 5 trues. Now if we do, let's see, was it y? Yeah, y is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we do y 
boo. Well, we're going to get five true values. Hmm. I actually paused the video there because I was like, why isn't this working? And I forgot. Why is not an N uh, NumPy array? It's actually just a list. Stupid why. Uh, okay, so what about x? Oh, okay, yeah, x will work. So we're going to do x, and we're going to index it with our, well, first of all, remember our bool array is five trues. So if we do x and we do our bool array to index it, we get every value from x. Now if we say, um, boo, I don't like you, I don't like your fifth value. So we're going to say um, boo number five, wait, zero, one, two, three, yeah, boo number five, which is four, uh, equals false. Now we've got true, 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 false. If we do x boo now, we get everything but the last value because that one was set to false. So if we do x, let's see, we're going to say boo uh, 3, we don't like you either, you're false now. So now we have true, 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 false, false. And actually I don't like that. So let's say boo 3 equals true instead. Okay, now we're going to say boo um, 0 is false. Now we have false, true, 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 false. Um, and we have x. Now if we index this, we should get 23. We're going to skip the first one, which is 0. And we're going to go to 23, 46, 69, and we're going to skip the last one. So if we index x with bool, with our bool array, it should be 23, 46, 69. And look at that, I'm a prophet. I predicted it correctly. So there's your basic introduction to a couple of different types of indexing. Um, also introduction to some basic data types and I briefly touched on broadcasting and I realize now that I went really fast through a whole lot of stuff but if you follow along with this and you pause the video and you do a few examples of your own then hopefully you can get used to these ideas or if you're already familiar with NumPy and you're waiting for some more complicated tutorials then you probably followed along just fine or it could be that I completely misspoke and I did and said completely different things and you know, it's hard to listen to yourself sometimes. So whatever, I hope you um, learned something important and valuable from this. And in my next tutorial, we'll talk about manipulating geometry. So until next time, peace, love, and robotic kittens from Dimension 9.